not writing our story anymore. We get to write our own. Finally free. 20 minutes later. You can't make this shit up. Hello citizens of the internet, it is I, your local queer, Xenocyte. Today I am rocking up two weeks late with Starbucks because today I am going to be talking about the series finale of Supernatural because that was extremely disappointing and apparently people care a little bit about what I have to say. So, which by the way, if you want to check out my Destiel video, I'll put a link to the video in the description. So, check it out, it'd make me happy. I guess the best place to begin for this would be to break down the episode in chronological order so that we slowly see the descent into complete terribleness that is the series finale of Supernatural. The episode starts off as a classic monster of the week trope, which I, I enjoyed that. I was genuinely enjoying the first 10 minutes or so of the episode, you know, just going back to basics, referring to John's journal, you know, all that sort of stuff. No angels, no demons, just good old fashioned vampires. I think it was a fitting way to end the story, you know, hunting some basic bitches. There was a pie festival and there's a scene that happens during the pie festival, which kind of irked me. I'm thinking about Cass, you know? Jack, if they could be here. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think about him too. You know what, that pain's not gonna go away, right? But if we don't keep living, then all that sacrifice is gonna be for nothing. I mean, Sam's allowed to feel sad about Cass, but Dean's attitude really came across as not caring at all about what happened to like, Cass and I guess also Jack, which is by no means Jensen Ackles' fault, it's the writers. But the scene was also by no means the straw that broke the camel's back. No, 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 no. This scene is like a minor transgression in compared to what happens in the next 10 or 20 minutes of this episode. It was more like one of the many nails in the coffin. It is also interesting that Dean conveniently forgot Cass's love confession but at this point I was kind of thinking like oh they'll like meet up later or you know they'll it'll be addressed later on in the episode which spoiler alert it doesn't but that's really the only good point of this episode like it, it starts off kind of strong and then just gorgeous completely just just downhill from there and I think the point where the episode really starts to crumble in on itself is when Jenny is introduced. Mostly because like she's on the screen for what, two, three seconds and is then like immediately killed off. So what are you like, the, uh, the big boss or something? No, I just called dibs. <gasps> like you bring her back, a minor throwaway character but not Crowley or Charlie. Her presence just sort of felt forced in this episode. I feel like it probably would have been stronger or like her presence there would have felt more impactful if she was the one that gave the killing blow to Dean. But that is where I lead us to the killing blow of this episode and we're barely halfway through. And that is Dean's death. <laughs> A complete and utter spit in the face of this character and the development and his story over the last 15 seasons. You know, for 15 seasons, it's been said numerous times that Dean was going to die young in a stupid way on a hunting job, as with all hunters. And for all those 15 seasons, Dean defied that. Dean said, no, fuck you, I'm not going to die young, dumb, and full of, you know. <laughs> no, but for serious, like, for those 15 seasons, Dean defied that. He 
defied that fate that everyone assigned him on. He defied those expectations. You know, like he fought the devil, angels, demons, literally God himself couldn't kill him. And yet he died from tetanus. During all of this, Dean makes it perfectly clear that this isn't even the life he wants. You know, all he really wanted was to get out of the hunting business, get himself a nice family, settle down and live a normal life. You know, and the writers just completely throw that away. What a complete utter waste of a decent character and growth. Among other things like found family, this show was about free will and defying fate and destiny and writing your own story. If he was fated to die so young in a stupid way on a hunting job, wouldn't it be more impactful to have Dean defy those expectations to actually pursue what he wanted? Wouldn't it be more emotional to see Dean retire from hunting to escape that life and to settle down and live an apple pie life. You know, that would have been a much more beautiful emotional end to that character. To actually see him happy for once. But no, instead we got... You did not earn that emotional scene, writers. The audacity. Here is what I think they should have done. Give Dean a near-death experience have him think he's going to die. So he has this emotional moment. He says his emotional speech to Sam. Meanwhile, Sam actually manages to get him help. This gives Dean a wake up call. He realizes he doesn't want to die young in a stupid way on a hunting job. He wants to actually live an experience life in its normalcy, in its mediocrity, you know? So Dean retires. He retires, he opens up a mechanic shop, and then Cass comes down from heaven and they become gay fathers and that's it, that's the <laughs> Or you know, something along those lines. But certainly like, have him retire, open up a mechanic shop and have a normal, simple, mediocre life. Meanwhile, Sam continues hunting, but he takes on more like Bobby's role. You know, he's like the scholar, the sage, if you will. He still does like hunting jobs, but more on like a part-time basis, not a full-time basis. He instead, you know, becomes the go-to guy if you want information on monsters. He collects books on creatures. Fuck, maybe he writes some. You know, I think, I think it'd be really interesting for Sam to have that legacy of writing some, I don't know, big encyclopedia of monsters or something, if you will. Maybe like translate John's journal into a proper book as a point of reference for other hunters to take on to for generations to come. And you know what, fuck it, give him a family too, why not? He continues on the hunting lineage of the Winchester family while Dean doesn't. He gets out. He has a white picket fence life and a nice slice of apple pie, both metaphorically and literally. And look, between you and I, if they really have to kill one of the brothers, like if they absolutely have to for some dumb reason, let it be Sam. And I say that as someone who likes Sam. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Sam stan. But also, if they have to kill him, have it be while fighting God. You know, have it be this ultimate epic sacrifice. You know, Sam laying down his life to literally save the world. Have it be something beautiful like they did in Swan Song. Not Death by Rusty Nail. Also, and I cannot stress this enough, but do the writers really expect me and fans of the show to just sort of accept the fact that the brothers aren't going to try and bring the other brother back? Like, these last 15 seasons have proven that the boys never fucking learned their lesson. Why is this the exception? I mean... Yeah, see, even even Snickers agrees. Why, why, why is that? It's like, sure, whatever, it was Dean's dying wish. But it was like always a dying wish. And sure, Dean says that only bad things come out of trying to bring the other back. But like, when has that stopped them before? Do you really expect me to just believe that Sam doesn't try to bring Dean back? 
do you really expect me to believe that writers? No, that's stupid and you're stupid for thinking otherwise. Anyway, after Dean's death we get a terrible montage of Sam living the fulfilling, happy life that Dean should have gotten. Except Sam is also wearing a terrible, terrible wig. Like what the fuck is that? Did the costuming team just like run out of budget money or something? Meanwhile, Dean is in heaven, having a few drinks with Bobby, and Bobby, you know, lays on him that heaven's reformed and changed and it's better now thanks to Jack because Jack is like the ultimate Gary Stu, honestly. He also informs Dean that, you know, he has eternity now, he can do whatever the fuck he wants. And what does Dean do? Does he visit his parents? Does he see Cass? No. I think I'll go for a drive. He decides to go for a drive. Like honestly, Dean, get your priorities straight. See Cass, hold hands, have a smooch, then introduce him to your parents. It's the only right thing. And then Sam dies of old age and his son, Dean, gives him this emotional moment that says the same thing that Sam said to his brother, Dean, when he was dying. Dad. It's okay. You can go now. I think at this point the fans are expected to cry and be like, oh my god, this is so beautiful. But no, because you didn't earn that, writers. You didn't earn that emotional moment. I'm not emotional about this. I'm I'm sad, but I'm not sad because this is a beautiful emotional moment. I'm sad because that's a god-awful terrible wig and you didn't earn this. This is just aggravating. Once again, the writers had the audacity. You didn't earn this. Shut up. Stop this. Fucking hell. And then Sam and Dean are in heaven together and they hug and they see each other. And once again, it's supposed to be now this beautiful reunion, even though it's only been like, I don't know, 10 minutes for Dean, but like 30 or so years for Sam. And watching this, all I can think is, why is Sam young in heaven? Didn't he like die old and, you know, wrinkled? Why is he young? Uh, are you just able to like shape shift on how you want to look in heaven? No, but for serious, the show ends and all I can think of is I am extremely disappointed and almost like angered at how the show has wrapped this up. You know, after 15 seasons, after all of these years, and this is how the writers decide to end the show, to end Supernatural. They disregarded everything that the story was about to create the most painfully obvious but at the same time just painfully terrible ending for these characters. You know, the show is about defying fate and writing your own stories. But I guess Sam and Dean could not defy the ultimate gods, you know, the writers. They couldn't defy that fate. And look, I would even go out to say that this series finale was worse than the Game of Thrones season 8 finale. And a small part of me feels like that's a controversial opinion, but like, am I wrong? Game of Thrones had like 8 seasons to build up to, and for sure it is within its own right like a cult classic, and that ending was a floundering mess in itself because it was just so rushed and, you know, it built everything up just for things to crumble. But Supernatural had 15 seasons to build up to this grand moment of fighting God and to defy fate once more. Also, side note, but I'm really annoyed with um, Kevin's ending. Like, you know, he's this ghost and he's forced to wander either earth or hell because he was casted to hell. So he cannot go to heaven. But I feel like that's sort of a plot hole because like, didn't John's soul get casted to hell like back in fucking season two? And didn't Dean eventually go to hell at one point? Like maybe that's different because he came back to earth or something, I don't know, and he's some special little kid. But also didn't Sam like go to fucking Lucifer's cage? But also maybe that's different. But you know what's not different? Bobby. Bobby went to hell. Why is he in heaven? Why does Bobby get to go to heaven? 
but not Kevin. Kevin deserved better, Kevin was a good character who didn't deserve any of the bad shit that happened to him, he deserves to, at the very least, go to heaven. But also, an ultimate side note, Jack is now the ultimate all-powerful being. Why can't he just bring Dean back to life? He managed to fucking bring Cass from the MT. Why can't he look down, realize that Dean's demise was very fucking sad like that like not sad in an emotional sense but sad in a dumb sense why can't he bring him back it's stupid there's like there's some clear plot holes here that i feel like the writers have done a terrible job wrapping up or maybe i'm missing something about kevin but i feel like i'm not missing something about jack i feel like that was just lazy writing there Anyway, tangent over, that's all for now. This is my last Supernatural video, so if you subscribed hoping that I'll make more Supernatural videos and that this would be like a Supernatural channel, um, I'm sorry to tell you, but that's not the case. But hey, you should stick around anyway because I like to make fun videos about commentary or UFOs or something. So you should stick around for that. And if you really don't like that, you can unsubscribe if you want. Like this video if you enjoyed it and leave a comment about what you think of the Supernatural finale. Subscribe for more fun commentary about my opinions on things, whether it's you know, some social commentary or maybe something about, I don't know, Jeffree Star or Shane Dawson, some sort of YouTube drama, or maybe just me talking about UFOs. It's something I just like to make what I want when I want. So subscribe for that. And you can follow me on Twitter at Xenocytes. And until then, I will catch you next time. Bye.